Hey, what's happening? Welcome back to Speak Easy. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Anna, and this channel is all about helping you, the new and aspiring voiceover talent, to get your career off the ground by just sharing uh, some tips and tricks that I learned from the trade for more than over 15 years now. Today, we're going to do something different. We're going to call it Speak Easy Live from the comments section because I'm recording it live as I go through the comments section and answer them. So if you're ready to find out what the top three questions are, let's get started. The first question is actually coming from Kenji Gonzalez, 3121. So I'll post the question here. He says, awesome sauce, referring to the video that he just checked out. And he says, how to do recording just in case you're on vacation away from your room. So I'm thinking away from your home studio. Okay, well, first of all, I try not to work while I'm on vacation because I feel like it defeats the purpose of you going on vacation because you're supposed to relax, enjoy you know, this new place that you're visiting, whether a country or, or a local place, or enjoy the company of your friends or your family. And it's hard to do that if you have um, your work in mind. And I don't think that's fair to your family and friends as well. So I try not to do that, mix business with pleasure, so I work twice as hard before I go on vacation, meaning I have to finish all of my pending orders, whether it be on Fiverr or my regular clients. And also I tell my regular clients that I have a vacation coming up. So let's just say I will tell them that, hey, I'll be gone from this date to this date. So if you have anything for me to record that you need me to do on those dates, you have to give it to me earlier so I can work on it earlier and I can submit it to you on time. And then once I'm done with all of the, of the orders on Fiverr or any other platforms, I would have to set my um, availability uh, mode to on vacation so that anytime a client visits my profile, they would know that I'm not available because I don't want them sending me a message and then I won't be able to answer because I won't be checking um, Fiverr or my emails on vacation. So I don't want that to affect my response rate. So it's better if I just put my available <laughs> the availability mode, my availability mode on not available so that it doesn't affect my response rate. Now, what if you really have to? So that happens. And it, I have to admit that happens to me sometimes because, you know, if the pay is right, right? If the if the price is right. So you have to do it sometimes. What I do is, of course, I pack up my USB microphone. And of course, I need to bring my laptop with me because my DAW is in there. I bring that with me on vacation. And once I get to, for example, my hotel room or my Airbnb uh, place, I will have to find the quietest room in that place. So that could be the closet. Maybe there's an attic. Uh, that you can go to a basement that could work or a bathroom. See, the problem with bathrooms are there are a lot of smooth surfaces there and there might be mirrors on there. And you know how it is with bathrooms. They're very echoey. So that could be the last place that you would want to record in. Mm. You can also record in your car. So if you have uh, packing blankets at home, bring them with you on your vacation if you can. OK, so that you can use them to cover smooth surfaces to avoid, you know, your voice bouncing off of those smooth surfaces and into your microphone again, because you are not going to want that sound. And then um, you also have to check the noise floor. Of course, even if you're in your own studio, you still have to check that. OK, to make sure that you don't you're not picking up any of the noise around you or even outside of your room, you know, you just want to be picking up your voice. So you have to choose the quietest room in the hotel or your Airbnb. Now, I understand that it would be hard to choose a quiet room if you're, for example, at a beach, right? That's hard. And or you're in the middle of a busy city like 
Shinjuku, you know, never sleeps or I don't know, wherever else you might be, that might be hard. Even if you find the quietest room, it's never quiet because someone is singing next door or maybe cars honking outside or uh, people playing volleyball at the beach or people are just being loud because they're on vacation. They have the right to, right? So if that is the case, then Kenji, you're just going to have to wait, wait it out, figure it out. And the first couple of days when the place is the quietest. It could be 2 a.m. It could be 4 a.m. You just have to make sure that it's quiet, okay? Because otherwise you might have a very, very unsatisfied client. <laughs> um, otherwise, you're just going to have to be also honest with them that you can't do it. Okay, but that's my suggestion. Um, hopefully that helps you and hopefully you don't have to record or work while you're on vacation. Okay, all right. So off we go to the second question off the comment section. This one is coming from the comment section from Instagram and this is um, Daisy Joy Torres. She says, well, I'm just going to get to her question. If Mawano, I'm not sure if that's how you say uh, the brand name. I'm sorry. Okay, forgive me. Please tell me how to say the brand name correctly down at the comment section. But Moano Microphones, is it okay as a beginner's mic? I wanted to purchase the link mics on your channel, but I do not have the budget at the moment. Thank you. Um, Daisy, I have not had the opportunity to actually test this microphone out, but I did do some digging. And I found out that this microphone is a condenser microphone, which is great for voice over, but you just have to make sure that you have a good vocal booth or a room that is super quiet because condenser microphones are super sensitive and they will pick up everything. So just make sure that you have a very, very quiet place. And like I've mentioned before in my other videos, I've always said that if you were to choose between a great vocal recording booth or a great microphone, I would always go for the great recording booth with a so-so microphone. Okay, because that is way, way more important. Okay, so um, if this is the microphone, the Moano microphone is the microphone that you can afford, then Daisy, this is your beginner's microphone. This will be your first ever microphone and that's okay. You just need to know how to use it properly along with your vocal booth and your DAW and all the things that you need to know as a voiceover talent. And I have covered all of that, almost all of it, on my past videos on this channel. So all you have to do is binge watch. I got you, girl. So Daisy, good luck to you. Uh-huh. So we are down to the last question. Wow, that's so fast. Uh, the last question for Speakeasy, live from the comment section. Hey, before we get to the last question, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Like this video also and leave me a comment down at the comment section telling me that you're liking the video and also share this with your friends or your family, especially if they want to become a voiceover talent just like you. Also support the channel if you can. That is by not skipping any of the ads that are shown on the videos. That is how I earn on YouTube. And I want to thank you all for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Back to the YouTube comment section. This is from UEJTube7692. And he says, hi, Anna. Thanks very much. I'm finding your videos very clear. Thank you and useful. Thank you. I have just gotten myself some good equipment. So he got himself a Rode NT1A mic and the Focusrite Scarlett headphones and a solo interface. And I have a Fiverr account. Very good. And Audacity installed. Well done. But he says, I'm just learning. So I'm not ready to create my first gig yet. Can you please tell us how we should title the audio file 
and what tags to use in the metadata box. And also, what does it mean to provide split files? Thank you very much from sunny Scotland. Hello, Scotland, where it's 22, cel 22 degrees Celsius and it is considered hot. Seriously, that's like my AC right now. <laughs> Um, okay, but hello from Manila to Scotland. Okay, so let's answer your first question. Please tell us how we should title the audio file. Okay, so my process is when I record, for example, I'm given three lines, okay? The script has three lines. Those three lines I will give, my aim is to present three good takes okay so i will i will probably voice it more than three so maybe five times i will voice it per line and then um so when i first save that file i will save it for example the title is speak easy okay so it will be speak easy raw like raw material so i don't do anything to that file i don't take out my mistakes. I don't choose uh, my favorite three takes. I don't do any of the processing. I just save it as is. Okay, so I take that raw file and then I save it as speakeasy raw. And then I go through it again to edit it. So out of the five or out of the seven, I choose my best three takes. Okay. So I take away the rest and then I take away my, my mistakes. And if the client asks me to uh, do some processing, so I do it with this second file. And then I, I name that file, for example, speak easy final. So that is the file that I will send to the client. So Maybe you're asking me, Anna, will you erase the raw file? No, I won't. Okay, so why? For example, my client gets back to me and says, hey, you know what? I didn't like any of the three files that you sent. Maybe you, have, you can do it again and be a little slower or put a little more drama or maybe um, be a little more happy. And say, for example, in my raw file, I actually have those things that they wanted so I can just send those as opposed to re-recording everything else. So, you know, work smarter, not harder, right? So that's why I do not erase the raw file. Or for example, they say, you know what? I don't like the process file. I'm sorry, but can you do it again? And you're like, hey, no problem. Sure, I can do that. But you just go back to your raw file because you haven't done you haven't done anything to it, no processing. So you just re-edit it, but you don't have to voice it again, right? You're learning something from this, right? So don't erase your raw material. Okay, so next question from, let's just call him EJ, okay? From EJ is, meta, is what tags to use in the metadata box? I'm thinking you are pertaining to this box right here. If you are, well, just ignore that box. I don't do anything to it, really. I just, you know, type in the file name that I want and save it. So pay no attention to that metadata box or the tags that you need to do because I never do. And it doesn't do anything to my file. Okay, EJ. So the last question is, what does it mean to provide split files? So EJ, you're talking about your additional services on Fiverr, right? Because you can offer your client split files and you can charge them for that. So what does that mean? For example, your client has a long, long script. Okay, so what you would normally do is just record that, edit out the mistakes and send the whole file to them, right? But for example, the script is actually broken into five segments or five categories. You can actually offer it to them or maybe they will ask you. So for example, you will offer it to them. Hey, you know what? I've noticed that your script has five segments into them. Maybe you want me to split up the file into five different files and give them different file names if they don't have their own file names. So you can offer that to them and you can charge for it. So instead of uh, sending in one long file, you'll send them uh, five different files for each category. 
does that make sense? So that's what it means to provide split files. Okay. So keep that in mind and always try to offer, um, you know, extra additional services to your clients so that your basic rate will go a little bit higher. All right. So I think I covered all of uh, the questions for today's episode of Speak Easy live from the comments section. And I want to thank all of these people who sent in their questions. So hopefully, if this was a question that you had in mind as well, I have given you the answer. So I really love this uh, new segment that I have because really your questions make my life easier. So if you have any question that you have in mind, as long as it has anything to do with voiceover, please do write it down at the comment section so I can go through them and maybe I'll tackle it in the next episode of Speak Easy live from the comments section, okay? So with that, I wish you all a fantastic day and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers. <laughs>